in this part I want to dial in the shader a little bit better and actually start getting those specular and reflection attributes to really start to show uh, on the shader because it's just not doing it quite yet now here's something really nice about the Arnold renderer is that if you click anywhere in the render view on an object you can see a middle mouse click left click on it and hold you can see a little shader element to it and what this does is it allows to bring up the parameters for that particular object in the attribute editor so if I come up here and click on the handle you can see now we clicked on the handle attribute and there's the shader the thing is with this particular object it's one shader for the whole thing but it's really nice so if I want to like maybe click the background and look I just brought up the attributes for the background and then there's that Lambert one object so now if I want to click on the jerry can and I want to play with the shaders on the jerry can click on it boom there it is so it's really nice to be able to click on any object in the review and bring up the shader attributes for it so you can work on it quicker all right so let's dial in a few more attributes uh, in here um, let's go into the specular right now we put all those specular maps in the problem is there is no specular attributes being added to this object that's why the reason why is because the weight as like a certain percentage of it is turned off so specular is basically turned off because weight is set to zero so if I increase that now the weight is being added on but the thing is it's just not displaying correctly it's way it's making everything way too shiny so you know you could sit here and kind of tweak the weight until you get something that you like but it's still not going to display correctly the reason for this is because the maps that are being brought in the specular the roughness and the fresnel are not in the correct color space uh, typically they like linear color space uh, which means the images are typically darker and it's a little bit more prone to what the computer likes to read but for uh, to be able to display the images correctly for screens or monitors there has to be a boost in value to those textures to be able to display the problem is the boost in value is being added to the maps and then being and translated back into Maya and then back into Arnold which gives us the incorrect um, specular controls or specular look that we have right now so we need to kind of change the values or change the gamma of those textures to actually display correctly so we actually have to come up with a gamma node to do a little bit of color correction to make those textures or the specular maps display correctly inside Arnold so what we're gonna do that where we're gonna be ending up doing that is in the hypershade so we're gonna come up to the top and we're gonna click on the hypershade window and this brings up our hypershade and in here uh, along the top you see materials and then we've got our textures we want to go to materials and we want to hover over the jerry can shader uh, right click hold and say and kind of move towards the bottom say graph network and then here's our network I'm gonna kind of full screen this a little bit and I'm gonna alt middle mouse click and it should roughly kind of be the same uh, parameters as in the viewport if you use the wheel mouse you can kind of scroll in and these are all the back end nodes inside of Maya making this shader work so you can see there's a 2d placement node so if I click on it here's the attributes uh, for that node so this is where it's all the UV parameters how this uh, is all displayed or the how the UVs are being used inside of Maya so that's what this node takes care of this one right next to it is the actual we've seen this lots of times where we actually change the filter type and the image name 
uh, and the input. So that is something that we um, see all the time, but now here's the node for it. So, and that's the same thing for, you know, this is the specular, base color, roughness, and uh, then the Fresnel map here. And then here's the bump node with the normal map. And then here's the bump T 2D node where we were changing some of those parameters right here. So there you are. So that's what this is. And it's all getting put into the Arnold standard shader and it's going into its proper channels in here. So what we need to do is we need to find two textures in particular and add a, a color correction to that. And we're going to use a gamma node for that color correction. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the move your cursor into any blank area, hit the tab key. So press the tab key. It brings up a window and then start typing in gamma and then you, what you want to do is you want to select gamma correct. So this is going to be a gamma correction is what this is. So you can click on that and then hit enter and it brings up that node and it gives us some input values. So what we're going to do is we're going to input this into the roughness channel. So the roughness channels is down over here. So what I'm going to do is kind of back up a little bit. I'm going to take the 2D node for the roughness channel and the actual texture node move that back and I'm gonna move this gamma into its place so we're getting these nice little rows here is row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 just makes it nice and organized and there's this little line that's taking it from the alpha and connecting it into the specular roughness of the shader I want to select that line and hit delete and it gets rid of it and what I want to do is I want to take the out color of the roughness and put this into the value of the gamma. Click it. Boom. There it is. And made that connection now. And then I'm going to double click or click on the gamma node. And here's the parameters for the gamma node. Right now, all the settings are set to one. So each channel or each box in here corresponds to a different color channel. First one is going to be red, second one is going to be green, and then the last one is going to be blue, red, green, and blue. So we're correcting all three channels all at the same time here. And what we want to do is we want to drop the value of this gamma to about half. So we're taking the values and making it darker. So we're going to go to the first one, type in 0.45. And you would think, why, why don't we just type in... 0.5. Well, this we're actually taking a certain value of an inverse of 22, 20, to, uh, 2.2, or a gamma of 2.2, which basically means that is the color correction value that textures display at. So, like this texture right here. If I just make this a little bit bigger. For this texture to display correctly on our monitors, there is a color shift applied to this texture, and that's a gamma of 2.2. So that's, you know, for every texture that you see, there's always that color shift. This is a sRGB color space, and that 2.2 gamma is applied to every texture that you see, all the textures on the internet, all that. The problem is the computer doesn't really see it that way it sees it in a linear color space where gamma is set to one as you can see when it we first defaulted into gamma everything was set to one let's bring this back up so it's actually darker so if we set this if it's 2.2 .2 is what we see and we go to one it's darker now, the problem is if we take the inverse of 2.2 .2 for red, green, and blue, that's going to be 0.454. And that's what we put in here. And then that's going to display this texture correctly. And you can see it's already starting to change it as we go through each color channel. Four, five.